In this video, I want to share my impressions about the Leica CL for deep sky imaging. There are hundreds of interesting targets in the night sky, and for the planning of my astro photo shoots, I'm using the Atlas of the Heavens, which was designed by the Czech astronomer Antonin Beckmar. The night's nice charts provide different parts of the night sky, including the location of the Milky Way. The pen is indicating an example of the nebula in the constellation Orion, which is a popular deep sky imaging target during the winter months. I'll show you some images later. I guess you all have seen these beautiful shots of the Milky Way taken with wide angle, high aperture lenses, accumulating faint light over many minutes of exposure. I was curious if I could replicate some of these shots with my Leica CL, although I had some concerns about the darkness of the sky where I live, which is in a large metropolitan area. And I wasn't sure about the right lens. But let's start with a quick review of the Leica CL. The Leica CL is a small and portable digital camera. It has a solid build and weighs for the grunts. It's not a new camera, but it has all the tiny specs and functionality you're looking for. Since the invention of electronic viewfinders, there's no reason to have the viewfinder in the center of the camera. So here it is economically on the left side, more in line with traditional rangefinder cameras, which I like. You can use lenses from the L Mount Alliance, Leica, Panasonic, and Sigma. What keeps the camera compact is an advanced photo system type C or APS-C for short sensor. With 24 megapixels, the raw 16-bit images have a file size of 45 megabytes. So you will need to be prepared to deal with a substantial amount of data. One key factor that needs to be determined is the maximum exposure time to avoid scar trailing. If you mount your camera on a tripod, like I do, and don't use mechanical tracking. The so-called 500 rule sets an initial maximum. You simply divide 500 by the focal length of your lens. Examples are, for 30 millimeters, 16 seconds of maximum exposure, and for 1,000 millimeters, half a second. However, I found that for most lenses I tried, I needed to make exposure shorter to avoid trails. If you extend the time, you will notice increasingly longer trails due to their rotation along the axis pointing to the pole star. For my initial shots, I used the Sigma 30 mm f1.4 DCDN Contemporary, which is the type of high aperture white angle lens often recommended for deep sky imaging. Let me go over some of the settings I had initially chosen. Manual mode and manual focus. Using focus peaking of the camera is easy using brighter stars. Aperture 2.2, exposure time for seconds. ISO the gain is set to 6,400. JPEG and RAW. Storing images in JPEG gives you a quick idea about the image content, and the RAW format is critical for post-processing. And I will also use the built-in intervalometer for taking multiple images in the sequence. The initial results were not convincing and looked pretty grayish. Only some brighter stars could be distinguished. A contrast enhancement improves this image slightly, but also enhances inhomogeneities in background, mostly caused by urban stray light. To get an idea of the light pollution in your area, look up darksidefinder.com. Here we see parts of Europe with London, Paris, Brussels, and Amsterdam. And here's another view of the US East Coast from Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, down to Washington, D.C. Color coding ranges from very bright sky in white, meaning you can virtually read the newspaper outside in the night, 
to very dark blue and black. You find these ideal conditions like on the ocean in some parts of the Alps, in the Rocky Mountains or in the deserts. So is there anything we can do if we have such bright backgrounds? It is clear that reduction of ISO, further reduction of aperture, or shorter exposure time will not improve the situation as they do not increase the difference or contrast between the stars and the background. We need to figure out a different way. Let's look into the situation with my 30 millimeter lens at an aperture of 2.2. Assume that if we want to keep the intensity of the stars at least approximately the same, but work with the longer focal lengths, say 65 millimeter, then we need to reduce the aperture to 4.5 to keep the brightness of the stars, which are point objects, and the fraction limitation would only kick in at higher f-stops. However, the homogeneous background becomes magnified and diminished with the longer focal lengths, increasing contrast. Let's see if that works. First, I need a different lens. And I tried the Sigma 65 millimeter F2 PGDN. This is a lens for full frame, but this is also very suitable for APC sensors. If you look to the diffraction MTF as published by Sigma, you will see how sharp this lens is. Using a smaller APC sensor, you have the additional benefit to stay out of areas of diminishing performance at the periphery of the lens and you will receive the more uniform sharpness of the stars across the entire image. First, a shot with the 30 millimeter lens at f2.2, four seconds and contrast enhanced. And taken right after the 65 millimeter, f4.5, four seconds and contrast enhanced. We notice a much better contrast due to a reduction in background in both unprocessed and contrast enhanced images. For the next steps of improvements, let's take multiple images and stack them. The camera cycled through an exposure, background correction, and image storage sequence. I typically take 16 to 24 shots. For stacking, the software will need to identify a few stars and use them to align the slightly shifted star images between frames. There are several software tools available. I'm using Serial, which is a freeware. The software is in development since 2005. It has been much improved over the years and runs on different platforms. There are many tutorials available I don't have to go into detail here. Instead, let's see how the software performs. Here's one shot for seconds, F3.2 taken in raw format with the Sigma 65 millimeter lens of the Orion constellation with three bright bed stars on top and the Orion Nebula belly. Stacking 16 images for seconds each results in a much noise filtered and high contrast image with a dark background, revealing structural details of the Orion Nebula. Let me show you another example. One dense area in the Milky Way is in the constellation of Cygnus. The main star in Cygnus is Deneb. Close to it is the North American Nebula. I had good conditions in late September, low humidity, the object close to the zenith, and I was able to increase the aperture to 2.8. 16 images stack led to this initial image. The advantage of the 65 millimeter lens is that it starts resolving individual stars in the dense areas of the Milky Way on the lower left, something you won't see with short focal lenses. Zuriel counted over 14,000 stars in this image. I defined a region of interest around Deneb 
rotated at 90 degrees and enhanced the color. The Mission Nebula having a shape like North America is easily visible. It is amazing what this little camera, in combination with the right lens, is able to accomplish, and with less than two minutes exposure time and 50 minutes post-processing, it's even efficient. So in conclusion, modern APC sensor cameras like the CL, in combination with good lenses, can provide you with excellent opportunities for deep sky imaging. You just need a tripod and the white lens. If you have light polluted night nice skies and cannot escape to darker viewing sites, small telelenses up to let's say 75 millimeter are your best option. Still allowing exposure times of a few seconds without tracking. Make sure you direct the camera away from city light domes, pick nights where there's no moon, and make sure no stray light falls directly onto the lens. To get the most out of it, I recommend using software for stacking and post-processing to further improve signal to background contrast and to filter noise. It may take you a learning curve, but it will be worth it. In my next episode, I will review my experiences with the Leica CL using a telescope. Until next time, clear skies.